morning YouTube friends. It's a quiet morning here on our little farm and I'm back in my studio again. This morning very early we sent our daughter and our little grandbaby back to their home on a long drive and um, so life is going back to a very quiet normal and kind of lonely without them. But I must say I am back in my studio, which is nice. I did get a lot done when they were here. I got healing herb ointment and bee balm made, uh, lots of it. So I'm stocked up for a while, like maybe a month. It might get me to Christmas, maybe. But there's some other things I'm short on. First of all, I need to make some more shampoo bars. I had a very nice new customer in Florida. No, yes, Florida, who, <laughs> sorry, it's hard to keep up who uh, wanted seven shampoo bars and so um, and then I had one last big hunky one left and it sold on Saturday so I'm totally out and I've got to make some and then they won't be ready to be used for a month four weeks of curing so I've got to do that today so I can have them in December um, and that just brings me back to the market um, this is the busy time of year at the market this is when people are shopping for Christmas this is when people want to get out this is when people love to shop and um, they enjoy it as part of their seasonal activity. So I've really got to get a move on. I've done some weaving uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I've made a batch of soap, as I showed you, but I need to keep on top of things. I also haven't done much painting. I haven't done any, I've done zero spinning or processing of fleece and fiber. And that I've truly missed, but that's, you know, spinning on a spinning wheel is not anything you can do when you have a 15-month-old baby toddling around. So, um, and besides the fact, I wanted to give my attention to, um, to him when he was here. Speaking of shop chives, but I thought I'd go to TJ Maxx, one of my favorite stores to shop. For myself, I found these. I've never seen these before. Coconut patties. I love chocolate and coconut. I love a Mounds bar. It's one of my favorite chocolate bars. So I got these and they're individually wrapped. See that? They look really fun. They are good. They're more coconutty and less chocolate than a Mounds bar. And for that reason, I do not like them as well. I do. I like chocolate. I was really looking for a Toblerone, but I didn't see anything like that. So I got these. These are pretty good. Yeah, I'll nibble, nibble them down. For Adam, I got a bag of pitted dates. He loves dates. And um, these look like good ones. And then his other favorite. Now, he is picky about this. I got him a tin of what we usually call Danish cookies. Uh, I think it's royal Danish cookies usually over here. And the tins are usually shorter, like this tall. And they used to have the cookies. See the cookies there that have the currants in them? They used to have that. And then... They cheapened up and they got rid of the current cookies. I mean, they just had plain. And that was a little disappointment to him because that was his favorite cookie in the tin. And so when I saw these with current cookies, I was like, ooh, I'm going to. Of course, Adam could probably make his own. Actually, he did that last year. I should share some pictures of some. I think he made piped short bread or something, and then he dipped them in chocolate. I'll put some pictures on here if I can find them. He did that last Christmas. Um, we had a cookie exchange at church, and oh my goodness, that was fun. Um, anyway, so I got him a ten of those. That was his treat. And I wanted to mention one other thing from the market. Um, there was a lady there, sweet lady, I think her name is Lynn, a local lady. She's a potter. Potter, I find potters to be such interesting people. They have like this well of fascinating creativity inside of them that the rest of us don't have. And she, her stuff was selling so cheap. I bought this from her. Look at this lovely square. She likes this glaze on the back. It's, it's, it's a bumpy scratchy it's a scratchy glaze she, that was what she really loved about this pot i love this i love that design she had something with chickens on it It was too big for me for any of my purposes i have a small house and limited space but i knew exactly what i would do with this i'm putting my um, paint brushes in it that were lying on my desk and i i i guess this is a good arrangement this can be bad for them because when they're wet the water will drain back of course you can't store them this way 
um, I had mine horizontal, but I do like the look of that. So I'm going to do that. And then let me show you the other thing I found. Oh, this was $15. I told her, I said, that is way underpriced, girl. And she said, there's a reason for that. She wants her stuff to go live in somebody else's house. It's a hobby. And I thought, yeah, I can relate to that. <laughs> so that's how you get it sold as you underprice it. And it worked on me. Let me show you the trivet that I found too. That was, it's delightful. So here's the trivet that I bought from her. Um, I love that. Isn't that pattern pretty? And I love the color. I, I, I'm always mystified at what I like and what I don't like. Um, but I have very particular taste. That's not something I would normally... It's kind of steampunky looking. But I really like it. And it has the little feet on the back. It has little plastic pads. Anyway, it's a really nice trivet. She was selling this for $5. So um, I thought, goodness, I will just get it. And I knew exactly what trivet I was going to get rid of that was already on my table, which I have. <laughs> um, so things at the market are uh, things at the market are picking up. And uh, I'm hoping for a good year at the farmer's market. And then in January, I'll stay home because it'll be too cold. And I'll hopefully do more creativity. I also sold the last of my these cards these are prints that I get made in New Bern and I had four packs left of this there's five in a pack and a pack cost ten dollars so the little cards are two dollars a piece which is cheaper than um, my originals which are five dollars a piece but they come with little envelopes and so some ladies came and snatched up the last four packs of that so I have none of these left I have to get in contact with my printer and get some probably some geraniums some poppies and the one of my roosters done for sure. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is I am a connoisseur of pine cones. <laughs> I love pine cones. When I set up my nativity, my little nativity scene, um, I'll have to share that with you when I do that. Uh, at Christmas, I put pine, big pine, big pine cones around it to serve as the trees, which I think is a cute idea, but. Not all pine cones are created equal. Now, this, this is the kind of pine cone that I love. It is a, it's a warm golden brown. It's a beautiful brown here and thick. And these are kind of smooth. They're not, no jagged edges. I don't know. This is a small variety of this. I've seen ones like this that are twice as big. Um, you may not know that when a pine cone is wet, it closes up. And when it dries, it opens out. So that's the difference between the closed ones and the open ones is whether they're wet or not. Um, you can bring pine cones inside, even ones that have already fallen off the tree. And if you let them dry out, they'll open up. But some of them are kind of gray. Um, and I just find those to be not as pretty. But I found two of these. And I, am, um, I go on a walk most mornings. I don't know if I will this morning. I'm too busy. But I walk for a half hour in a neighborhood nearby. Um, through you know, this residential area and I'm figuring out which are the best pine trees because this is the time of year that they drop their cones and I'm going to be looking for the best pine cones. I, how many pine cones can you have in your house? I don't know, but I'll find out. <laughs> All right, um, so this morning I want to paint a little. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to make myself a pot of tea. Um, and I'd like to do a little bit of work on some spinning or dizzing or blending or something with some fiber. So, hope you're doing well and enjoy the video. Thanks. Well, Adam is at the grill again, and this time he's not cooking a big piece of chicken. That's actually bread. Actually, it's a pizza crust. We're having grilled pizza for lunch today. Thanks, honey. And while Adam is um, grilling pizza crust, I thought I'd show you our pecan haul so far. This was just from walking around in the yard um, for, well, I don't know, five, five minutes, 10 minutes. 
um, under one particular tree that I'll show you. So there's, and uh, you're supposed to only pick up pecans that when they drop are completely free of the husk that's around them. Um, if you have to peel off the husk or work the husk at all, that means you're gonna get an undeveloped pecan. So say the experts. However, that's only a little bit. This paper trash bag is getting rather full of pecans. And they're gonna sit in here. This is on our back porch. Also the laundry room. See my nice, fun, little itty bitty half size washing machine. Um, there's also a little itty bitty half size dryer that I'm gonna get when this dryer dies. <laughs> um, anyway, they have to sit in here and, and like everything else in life, they have to cure and dry. Uh, otherwise the pecans don't really have much flavor. They're kind of chewy, tasteless things. So it's going to be a good pecan year. Let me go show you the tree that I'm picking these up under. I'm standing at a distance from the tree. It's that one right there. It's probably one of our biggest and oldest. But you see how the tree just spreads as it goes up. And so its reach over the yard is quite extensive. <laughs> so I can pick up pecans from this tree over here. And I can walk through this whole section. And it also includes this little run back here that goes toward where the chickens are. And of course, all inside of the pasture underneath it. So it's just, it's a huge tree with lots of pecans this year. I think they're Stewart's. They're kind of big football shaped, big fat ones, really nice. So I'll keep you posted. I don't like to crack pecans. That's too much work. I'd rather buy them from the store, but maybe somebody can use them. All right, we've dolled up our pizzas and now we are putting them back on the grill. Adam's got a cheese pizza, and I've got a sausage pizza. And he's gonna put the dome on it so that that cheese melts and they heat back up. Friends, today I want to show you um, a little purse that becomes a baby bed. This is really cute. It's got a long um, handle with tassels on the end. And this is a little purse for a little girl. And when you open it up and turn that down, you have a little baby bed with a skirt. It's a bassinet and it has a hood and inside this has a little blanket and a baby doll. And you can also make a pillow for her if you're into that kind of thing. Now this is one I had something like this I think when I was a little girl and then I found this one when my daughter Julia was little and I bought it for her um, I just felt like they were so useful if you're taking your child to like the doctor's office or a concert or church um, or any other kind of meeting like that, that it's really useful. They can play with it. They can put other stuff in there too. It's a, it's a nice good size purse. Um, and then you pull these strings and it goes back into that shape. It's really a nice shape. And I thought I would go through it and describe to you, I, I made this pattern myself. Um, a few years ago, I probably made about a half dozen of these. They're pretty labor intensive. I also made the blanket and I also made the doll. The dolls are more work than the purse are. But I thought um, I would show you, you start at the bottom and across here, this would be a chain stitch that you start with. Okay, it looks like they've got, oh, I don't know, you can count those. <laughs> but it looks like maybe 25 chain stitches. And I would say this would not be a huge hook. I would say maybe a G hook, maybe an H. Um, and so then when you get down to the end, of course you're gonna go back and you're gonna do double crochets all along one side of the chain and along the other side. And then on the ends, it looks like they've put about four extra double crochets in each end, okay? And then you'll move up to the next row and you never increase again. At that point, you do double crochet 
around and around. So here's the first row. We have one, this is row two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, it looks like that top one is a single crochet. And you can see how they have put this ruffle into the top of that single crochet and how big the ruffle is in the top of each one of those. They've got two double crochets. See that? Okay. And then when you go up to the next one, boy. Yeah, they've got an extra one in between. So they've expanded it. If you look at it, you can see that they're expanding from this row to this row, I believe, to make it even bigger. And then after you do these two rows above that top line, because see, above that, that single crochet, that's where you turn it down. You can see where they have put this row of double crochet in just that top loop of the stitch, the very top of the stitch, to leave the um, rest of that as a nice rim around the outside of the bassinet. So after they get done with this row and this row, then they do a row, a shell stitch, where they put one, two, three, four. Those look like triple crochets. They're pretty big, yeah. Um, into one, and then they skip one, two, three, and they do four more, and they skip around like that, okay? And as far as how many holes are in here, I think there's 21 openings here around. <clears throat> and then um, they do a contrasting, alternating shell stitch above, and again, they do one, two, three, four double crochets into each opening here, and then they finish it off. Okay, now I remember, oh, and then you have to do this. This was a little tricky too, as I recall. I think I kind of invented my way. You have to pick your spot, okay, where you want it to be. Um, it doesn't look like, it looks like there's a more on the open end of the bassinet than there is, yeah, a little bit less on the hood end. And here's the shape you're looking for. Um, notice how they come up with, um, those look like double crochets, I think. And you're gonna taper down and not go out to the end. You're gonna taper down and reduce here. And then when they get to the top, they're using single crochets and probably just a little half crochet along the top, okay. You'll have to fiddle with that. I don't know what the pattern is to this. I just used this as a pattern when I made mine. And then um, I'm, I didn't, I had lost the blanket for this. And I don't know if this is the original doll. It may be, I can't remember. But I've lost the blanket, so I made this little blanket, which is the best I could do. Of course, that's quick. Now, the last thing is this drawstring is a little bit tricky. <laughs> did it first and it looks so nice but when I pulled it it didn't do anything you have to have it um, engineered correctly in these openings so that when you pull it does this <laughs> okay so let me show you what's going on with this. the two the string on this end this is one string I would recommend doing the tassel afterward keep the string open on this end this string comes into the oval and passes around and comes back out. This string on this side is the same. It comes into the oval and it goes in and out and in and out and it passes through here all the way around and goes back out, okay? That's the way when you pull it, each one of them is pulling the opposite side toward it, okay? So you're gonna have two strings of um, equal length that, does, that do that. And when you look over here, you can see here's the string from the opposite side of the oval passing straight across. But you can see the opening here where the string on this end of the oval is going out uh, both ends together all the way to the tassel. Tassels are not hard to do. It's like making a pom-pom. Um, you'll have to, I like how they've done this. They've taken this 
um, cord. This is, I think, I don't, that's not an I cord, but it's, uh, I cords are a pain. You really don't want to do that. I would just do a nice tight uh, chain stitch and they run it through the middle of the pom-pom and uh, knot it off and then they put this little extra thing here. This is, this is, I've probably had this for almost 20 years and it's still in really good shape, made with good acrylic yarn. I think anybody who's a pretty good crocheter can make this. Um, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the in the description, in the comment section, and I'll try to address them if for some reason I omitted something real important. Of course, you could, you don't have to follow this precisely. You can do whatever you like with it, but I think it does work well. You just have to make sure you have lots of increase here, okay, so that there's enough for it to really have a big ruffle and um, and fluff out over top and look like a real bassinet. Isn't that just adorable? Mm -hmm.